Hey folks, my name is Brent. Welcome back to my little shop. Over the last 15 years or so, I've had the chance to try out all kinds of really interesting and clever tooling for the shaper. But this video is one I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. I recently had the chance to try out White Hills adjustable carbide insert style cabinet door tooling set. Now I've often said that this set is one of the most practical, versatile and cost effective tooling solutions out there in the stackable adjustable style. And in this video, I hope to explain why. Now much of the shaper content on this channel has really been centered on the smaller to medium sized shops and therefore really been focusing on tooling that is flexible and versatile. The reality of it is of course this is a dedicated set for cabinet doors but what Whitehill has done is incorporated a number of design features into this set that make it very versatile and practical and therefore completely compatible with the business model of smaller shops. So what I'd like to do is take a closer look at the components that I have here. We'll get into a discussion about some of the features of this set, talk a little bit about specifications and capacity, then we'll move on to some demonstrations. I hope you find it helpful. What I have here is actually two complete sets. Now each set comes with the tools required for changing the tips, as well as some setup documentation and some really great drawings and diagrams. So I have the profile set here and that ships ready to produce ovolo, chamfer and lamb's tongue profiles. They use those terms a little differently in the UK, but you can see here what they look like. I also have the components required to do the square shoulder or the mission style door too. What I don't have here are the components required to do the popular bevel front or shaker style. And I also don't have the components to leave the rebate or the rabbit in the back for glass panels. So if you're unfamiliar with how these work, we'll get into more details in a little bit, but essentially what you're doing is you're nesting or you're stacking the various components together on the spindle to machine the sticking and the copes. I'm going to use the North American terminology for this. Now, having each operation performed by more than one component gives you the ability to do a number of different things and adds in a lot of flexibility, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is keep a running tally of all the features of this set that I found to be particularly appealing. So you notice I said we have two complete sets here, but we only have six components. This is because some components are actually used in both sets. So if you own one set, you by default basically own half of the other set. This same principle applies to the other profiles I mentioned a minute ago. What it means is you don't have to buy multiple complete sets in order to make the different common styles of door. This is a big cost savings if you do want to do more than one style of door. So these sets are considered zero set tooling sets. What that means is that once you've set your fences and your spindle height, you never have to adjust them again, even as you go back and forth between the cope and stick configuration. This is not only a big time saving, but it also is easier to produce quality results because you're not running the risk of making a small error as you adjust and tweak your fences and spindle height. Now, both of these operations are done face down. There's a lot of value in consistency, just in terms of your workflow in the shop, but it also helps ensure really good joints on the visible face. So if you have any irregularities or imperfections in your stock preparation and your thicknessing, for example, any of those imperfections are going to be pushed to the back of the door. So if you elect to fix them by sanding them down instead of running new ones to replace them, none of that sanding is going to happen on the front where there's a profile. One really nice feature about this set is it's designed to give you infinite adjustability in your tenon and groove thickness, anywhere between five and nine millimeters. That's about three sixteenths to five sixteenths of an inch. That's really nice because it gives you the ability to match your panel grooves to whatever flat stock you're using and deal with any irregularities in that flat stock. We all know that we can go to the store one week and buy a quarter inch nominal MDF and then come back six months later and it'll be slightly different. So having that infinite adjustability is really nice. So provided your material is anywhere between five and nine millimeters, you won't have to carry out a completely separate operation of rabbiting or rebating the back of your panels. That speeds up the whole operation and reduces the chances of error. So speaking of material thickness, this set will do from 22 to 33 millimeters. That's a little less than 7 eighths of an inch, right up to 1 and 5 sixteenths. On the low end, this is assuming a little bit more material on the front and back than you often find in North American doors. So I ran a sample of as low as 20, 20 millimeters. It turned out just fine and the set seems to work well there if you're comfortable with that joinery. On the higher end, the thicker end, that capacity puts you in a position to make larger, heavier doors, even for strength or even if just the aesthetic and the design calls for heavier doors. So speaking of larger doors, let's talk about tenon length. So the standard configuration cuts the end of the stub tenon for you at 15 millimeters, which is longer than many sets, giving a larger glue surface area and a stronger mechanical joint. 
but you can configure this set to make around 45 millimeter tenons if you want. So this significantly increases the glue surface area for larger doors, or if you just want to do higher end work on with longer tenons and smaller doors. Also opens the opportunity for pegging your tenons if you want. Now remember how I said this set was adjustable for tenon and groove width? Well this allows you to dial in the width that perfectly suits your tooling of choice for mortising, be that hollow chisel mortiser, chain mortiser, router bits, or old fashioned mortise and chisels. This set machines a small chamfer along the margins of the groove. This makes finishing a lot easier, but also simplifies frame assembly and panel insertion. If you want, you, different inserts are available that will leave a crisper corner if you prefer. The mission set, you can actually choose the open V joint, which is quite popular today if you wish. So run times on these carbide inserts is tremendous, thousands of linear feet, but if you ever do hit something, or you do dull them, replacing them is designed to be very easy. If you just look at this groove cutter here, for example, you can see that the walls here are very snug against the cutter. There's a tab at the back that limits how far in it can go. There are two locating pins here, and this is actually a countersunk kind of self-centering screw, so I don't think you can put this in the wrong place if you tried. And the rest of the carbide inserts are secured in a way that's equally as easy to set perfectly. And unsurprisingly for a European tooling manufacturer, this entire set in all its configurations is a man-rated set. In other words, this is of low kick back and chip limiting design. So the last thing I'll mention before I make some sawdust relates to the potential for customization. Whitehill can customize this set for you to produce different profiles if you want. You might only need custom tips, or you may actually need a different component, but Whitehill will be able to tell you that with a lot more detail. So I'd reach out to them and connect with them about that. So I've run out of room on my little notepad here, so we better get up and start making some samples. I'll give you a good shot of it so you can pause and review it if you want. Now setting up the shaper for this set is a very straightforward process. I simply installed some fresh wooden fences and broke into the back of them a little bit to shrink the fence opening size and then set them to take half a millimeter off when machining the sticking. Now I typically machine my sticking with an outboard fence and do my widthing at the same time. And this set is perfectly suitable for using that way too if you want. Now I coped first using my Agner Connor Max jig for most of them, which is perfect because it references off the table and works seamlessly with the zero set feature. For longer tenons, I use my bolt-on sliding table attachment, so of course how to adjust the spindle height as its table is above the height of the shaper table. Here I am using the Connor Max jig to cope the end of a rail at the maximum thickness of 33mm. I found the back pressure to be minimal and the results were perfect. Now switching over to sticking was fast and easy and sure enough produced components that didn't require any adjustment to my setup at all. On a well guarded machine though, with a four wheel power feeder, there's not really much to see. So let's skip right to the results. Okay, so what we see here is not an exhaustive collection of every different way that you could use this set, but we've got a good cross section of the primary characteristics, as well as a few examples of how this set can be really flexible. And in fact, just running these samples, I discovered a couple other different ways you can use this set, and I'll mention this as we go along. I have an example or two of each profile here. Now, these are all common profiles. We've all seen them before, but I mentioned in the intro that the set is designed for 22 to 33 millimeters. Now, 20 millimeters is a fairly common door thickness in North America, and I ran this set with a 20 millimeter component, and it worked just fine. So if you're fine with that geometry, if you're fine with that joinery, the set will work just fine for that. And in fact, in this shot here, you can see the gentle chamfer that's on the outer edge of the groove that simplifies assembly and panel insertion. Now for all of these, I did the profile in one pass on my five horsepower machine. Whitehill does recommend a minimum of three horsepower. I ran it on my smaller machine and it worked just fine. 
This set is a little bit more than six inches in diameter, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the hole in your shaper table is suitable for that. Now the six inch diameter tooling left an excellent finish on everything I threw at it, including deliberately running some white oak as well as a couple pieces of sugar maple against the grain. The joinery is nice and snug as well with the stock set up giving a nice sliding fit. Now I did a little experiment and I used some Tight Bond 3 to glue up some components. Tight Bond 3 has a very high solids content but it's also water based and both of those together will really tighten up the joint. I found that the joint could still be pushed together by hand, took a little bit of firm pressure. Now that's not an issue of course because we're going to be using clamps probably but I think they found a really good balance in the fit. There's a half millimeter of clearance at the bottom of the stub tenon which guarantees you're not going to bottom out but also helps uh, any extra glue escape. So this sample here shows a few different things all in one. This is in pine and is right at the maximum of 30 millimeter, 33 millimeters in total material thickness. Now, instead of making the groove also at the maximum of nine millimeters, I decided to match the groove to my mortiser tooling so that I can demonstrate longer tenons. We'll talk more about the longer tenons here in a minute. Now, this was straightforward to do. I simply measured my chisel and added the appropriate number of shims to the base set to make it work. And I hit it in one pass. That's not a testament to my measuring ability, but more a testament to how easy it is to work with very accurate and precise tooling. So I discovered a couple of interesting things while doing this. So first, you can easily adjust the fit of your tenon or sub tenon by simply fine tuning the number and type of shims that you're using. So if you're doing furniture grade work, you can re easily achieve that sort of coveted firm sliding fit if you want. And remember, not everybody agrees on how tight the joint should be, even in standard cabinet doors. So you can easily, with this set, make the adjustments and get exactly what you want. In fact, what's really nice is because this set is always face down, in other words, the profile section down against the shaper table, any of the adjustments that you're making are not affecting the geometry or the position of that profile, so there'll be no need to adjust your spindle as you home in on that exact fit that you want. Now, as for the tenon itself, substituting the stock component that normally machines the back half of the joint and the stub tenon to length, with a component from the mission set, shimming as required, permits tenons up to about 43 millimeters long. Now, if you have an adjustable groover, you can make the comb joint at the corners if the widths are compatible or a traditional mortise and tenon joint, as I mentioned a minute ago. Now, this is something else that I noticed when looking at this option. Because the stub tenon length in the standard configuration is so long, it's 15 millimeters, it puts the bottom of the groove well below the profile which means haunching your long and longer tenon is easy because it's well clear of your profile however you approach the haunching process. So let's look at the mission or the square profile option. There's not a lot to see here. It's a very simple style, but there's a couple of neat little variations here on this one door that I'll mention. This, of course, is the V-joint option, and on one of the rails I have the chamfer running along the rail as well, and on this one it doesn't. I've seen it done both ways, and the set's compatible with either approach. Now the cutters that make that V-chamfer can be positioned in a couple of different locations on the block, and what this does is it allows you to make that V-joint across a really broad range of material thickness. So that's nice. And of course over here we have our standard square shoulders. Now none of these doors have had any finish applied, they're just mock-up doors just to test out the set. Uh, but what I did do is prepare them all for finishing just to test out the time required to do that. And what I really liked is the zero set functionality worked perfectly in both the fence setting as well as the spindle height. So the, the only sanding that I needed to do was simply to remove some of the planer and jointer marks on the face of these things. There was no sanding required to get the joints flush, which was really, really nice. So one of the things I noticed about using this set is I keep kept discovering new and interesting ways I could use it. But there are three really interesting characteristics of this set I didn't get to try out and demonstrate, but I want to mention quickly. One, this set is entirely compatible with machining of arch top doors. Now it's a six inch diameter tooling set, so you're going to want to make sure that the radius is compatible, but it works just fine. Also, we haven't spoken about machining the outside of the doors. A lot of doors today, you'll see a profile on the front on the outside, or the back on the outside, or sometimes both. I've spoken with Whitehill about this, and tooling can be had that works perfectly with the zero set principle of the main tooling set. 
What that means is you can machine all the components as you normally would, assemble them, and then install a cutter block on the shaper, and you won't have to adjust the spindle height, you won't have to adjust the fence settings, and you can machine the profile on the outside of the door. That not only speeds up the operation, but really helps with consistency. And third, I want to reiterate the value of having a customizable tooling solution. White Hill Spindle Tools is the actual manufacturer of this set. They make it in their headquarters north of London. As a result, they can easily modify this set for you if you need it. Now that's great for tomorrow. If there's a profile that's not available in the standard set, you can have that profile made. But more significantly, I think it's really valuable to know that in the future, this set is not going to suffer from the whims of fashion and trends and it will always be available to you as a core component of the cabinet making side of your business. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. I want to thank Whitehill for the opportunity to try this out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.